Watch you guys, if you're looking for a backup solution, check out Synology's disk station. Now this is the DS1019 Plus. Now this is a five bay uh, NAS, which allows you to have up to uh, 70 terabytes. That's 14 terabyte drives times five. And also with the raw capacity expansion unit of 140 terabytes, which is 70 terabytes plus 14 terabytes here. Now this is an awesome bit of kit, it's got 8 gigabytes of internal memory uh, on two slots and you've also got your Celeron, uh, Celeron processor in there which is your J3455 64 bit which is a quad core 1.5 burst up to 2.3 gigahertz. Now this is a bit of kit that every home should have for backing up all your photos, all your documents, all your videos, all your media and whether you're in a business or a home something like this is essential today in 2019 so what we're going to do is take a full look at it and this is what you're going to get inside the box you're going to get your quick start uh, installation guide and believe you me it's so easy to install i'll show you everything how to do that in a second but basically it's just plain and simple just plug in your drives plug in your cables plug it into your network and away you go you've got your little keys here to lock out your drives if you need to you've got some screws here as well you've got two ethernet cables here and this is because the unit does come with uh, two one gigabit ethernet ports you also have your kettle lead which is your basic uh, cable for powering up the uh, device itself and we also have our power brick and our kettle lead will go into uh, this power brick and then we plug it into the wall and this will give the device power and that's pretty much it uh, with the whole kit here now obviously this comes diskless and you will need to buy uh, your uh, drives um, but basically you can see here the size of the power brick here uh, if they would have implemented that into the unit it would have made the unit a lot bigger but you can see the unit is quite small for a five uh, drive uh, bay uh, NAS drive so let's take a look at um, the NAS drive itself now in more detail so let's remove one of these drives here I'm just going to pull the little lever at the bottom and this will release the actual caddy here and there is the drive. Now we're going to be putting the Seagate Ironwolf drives in here, 4 terabytes. we've got 3 of those to put in and it's a simple toolless design here. The drive caddy is made of plastic uh, but basically it's nice and sturdy and very easy uh, to install as you can see here. So it's a plastic construction uh, toolless design, you just need to put the drive in and then snap on the little uh, plastic catches on the side. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Very simple to do. So that's how we want to do that there. And once you've got it all nicely lined up, all you'd need to do now is get the locking tools here. Just push these on the side and they snap in to position like so. There we go. I'll just do the other side. And once we've got these done, they can only go in one way, these uh, locking mechanisms here. And it's a very simple, easy, uh, hot swappable uh, drive bay here. So if you need to add more drives in at a later date, you can do this. It's got three in here. And if I choose the right RAID system here, I will be able to add two more drives in at a later date without losing all my data. We just snap it into place and push that down. Now we can also lock this up if we want to by just going in here and turning it and it will lock it if we wanted to do that. And it will be locked like so. Anyway, let's take a look at the actual NAS drive itself and we can take a look in more detail to see what it has to offer. So here we have the actual unit itself. You've got five bays on the front here. Again, you've got so much storage capacity available to you here. For a small business, this is ideal or even a larger home that wants to back up all the data for the family. You can share it with your family and friends as well. You can see you've got your LED lights here and your status light and a USB 3.0 port on the front and your power button is there as well. Now you can also plug in uh, wireless cards into here and make it wireless if you wanted to or you can even uh, plug in another storage drive if you wanted to via that um, USB port. Now you've got the name on the side here which has been turned into some ventilation and also on the back we do have those fans. Now these are smart fans, these will kick up and spin up more when they need to when the unit is getting hot. Uh, but they can also be turned down as well inside uh, the control panel here as well. 
But in general, the unit itself is very quiet and they are very good quality fans, which means you don't get like an airport uh, feeling when you've got the unit on. You've also got a USB 3.0 on the back and you've also got those two one gigabit uh, ethernet ports here. Now these can be linked to give you the two gigabit if you needed. And also we do have the eSATA port on the bottom and your power input here. Now if you're looking for speeding up your device you can use the two M.2 slots on the bottom and this is for caching and basically these are NVMe uh, SSD uh, slots which will give you super fast uh, data transfer read and write here. You need both of them in there to get the read and write um, data reading there uh, for those files. Now what they will do is basically cache your files on these drives. Uh, the, fi the files that you use on a regular basis these will uh, obviously make like a sort of a small mini raid on here really and transfer those files super quick across the network uh, so you can get access to those files very quickly. So any data that is accessed regularly this can really speed up uh, those uh, data transfers and access to those files. Now this won't obviously speed up any streaming or anything like that but it's a pretty nice feature. You can see inside the, the uh, NAS drive here I've just removed two bays here so you can see inside there and you can see the board on the back there uh, for this NAS uh, drive. Now I've only populated three of these drive bays which means at a later date I can uh, populate the other two and all my data should be fine. So I've got three four terabyte drives in here. So let's power this up and uh, get it set up. Now I'll go through the process by logging onto their um, Find My Synology. And they've got a special website which you can go to here. Now you should see the uh, yellow status light coming up here and that's because we haven't created any volumes yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've gone to uh, find.synology.com and it's now detected uh, my NAS drive on the network and I can now click on connect. So let's go ahead and uh, click connect and this will start to connect and start to uh, get our uh, NAS drive all set up here. So there we go. So that should now populate and what we need to do here now is create an administrator account here. So you can just go ahead and give yourself a server name and username and password and all that sort of good stuff. So go ahead and do that. And then what we want to do here is click next and go on to the next stage. Now this is the DSM update and maintenance uh, to protect your disk station and important data. So I've got the two ticks in the bottom here. I'm going to click on the install the latest DSM uh, version automatically. You can choose whatever you like here, but I'm going to be doing this. Now obviously here I need to change the dates and, and times. So I'm just going to do, say for instance, um, Wednesday and Sunday and maybe something like three o'clock in the morning because you don't want to be turning this NAS on and off. It's going to be running 24 seven. And what that means is it's going to be doing all of its updates in the middle of the night when I'm asleep, which means it's not going to slow my network down uh, with updates and stuff like that when I need it in the daytime when I'm working. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you can choose whatever days you like here. You can do seven days a week, it's entirely up to you. I'm just going to choose a couple of days here when I'm not as busy and we'll go here and leave it at uh, three o'clock in the morning. Now the um, bad sector here, I've left that to 50 and I've also left run smart tests on the drives here. So a little check and then let's go next. Now you can do the quick, uh, quick connect here if you want to. So if you want to set up the quick connect, what you can do is create an account here and they'll give you a little code. If you already have one, then it will have your quick connect code. I'm going to skip this section here, but if you do want to set that up, you can do, and this will allow you to connect to your Synology outside by using your quick connect code. I do see that as a bit of a security risk. So I'm going to skip that part and it will say, Are you sure you want to do that? Um, you can access this remotely by just using the quick connect code. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next stage. Also, I'm going to leave the tick out of uh, share my uh, Synology device network uh, location with uh, Synology. Now, obviously, you can tick those boxes if you wish, and you can also set up that Quick Connect ID code if you want to. There is nothing wrong with it, in my personal opinion. It's just that I uh, choose not to do it. So I'm going to click uh, Go here and let that go ahead. And I'm just going to click on No Thanks here just for the tutorial. 
and uh, we can uh, say no thanks here so let me just go ahead and get this all set up here now what I'm going to do here once I've done this is set up my volume uh, for the actual drive now you can do remind me later if you wish now you're going to get a bunch of these little tips popping up and that's because you've just set it up but obviously if you want to uh, go through all the uh, tuition there you can do I'm just going to skip through this bit okay it's telling me the drives in good health but obviously we don't have any volumes and I'm going to go ahead and start to connect those you've got this little area up here you can click on this bit here and this will open up a little menu you can drag stuff to your main desktop if you want to and customize it to your own needs but basically I'm going to go to the storage manager and click on this item here and once we go inside here you'll see it says the drives are healthy and it tells me how many drives I've got in and how many slots I've got available but it also tells me uh, that we don't have any volumes uh, there's no volume status here so what we need to do is create a new volume and that's pretty simple all we need to do here is go up to where it says volume and we can then click on uh, create a new volume so let's click on create a new volume here there we go now you've got a couple of options here available you've got the quick method or the custom method the custom method is more for the advanced user if you're into setting up your own uh, raid types and stuff like that and you're more experienced with NAS then you can go into the custom area I'll just quickly skip through here a little bit so you can see it here so it shows you create uh, the uh, system pool here better performance you got a bunch of other features inside here and it may get a bit too complicated for some people uh, so I'll just go through and just show you some of the things here you got raid and a bunch of other raid settings you can set up here and if you're finding that a little bit too much then you want to do the quick setup which I'm going to show you right now uh, so let's go ahead now if you want to see something like this a little bit later on in other videos let me know and we can do that for you certainly so let's go ahead and uh, I'm just going to go next one more time here so you can see the drives here and I'm just going to go back now the quick method is going to let me set up a hybrid uh, RAID which is SHR and this is going to allow me to uh, use the free drives that I've got in there and you'll see it says SHR created with only one drive will not be able to tolerate drive failure and you can see the information there you can read it for your own self there uh, SHR2 if I selected this it won't let me do it because you need a minimum uh, of four drives on there now Synology have come up with a lovely little tool on their website which allows you to calculate your uh, RAID here so you just put in the drives that you need into your little uh, Synology uh, NAS and it will allow you to select what type of RAID that you want here and it will show you basically how much you use for protection and how much you have available for storage and uh, as you can see here by selecting certain types of RAIDs it will give you that information on the screen which is very useful when you're ordering your drives and also when you're setting up your RAID so I'm going to leave mine set to SHR so what we're going to do here is we'll go through the motions here and go next and this will take me to the next screen here and you can see now we've got our drive selected should give you the information there that we've got so go next and it will say all the data will be uh, overwritten on this drive so that's okay they're brand new drives so we're going to say yes and I'm going to select the top method here here and that's going to be the BTRFS and you can choose uh, whatever you like but I'm going to be going with that option available to me and once we've done this we can now click apply and this should now start to get our drives ready and create our volumes for us now this will take a, a quite a long time so be patient you can see here it's starting to create an active a, a volume for us and you'll see all the information start to come up on the screen here so I could say that this would take a, you know a good hour or so before this is fully completed and you'll see the countdown coming in a second I'll show you that part in a bit so once that's finished uh, creating our system you should now see some information on the screen and this will basically give us the uh, volume number and it will also give us a bunch of other information uh, like the uh, type of uh, RAID that we are using and it will also give us the information like uh, the storage pool uh, that we've uh, chose there and also 
you can see it's chosen our file system, which we got, which is our BTRFS. And again, you've got the verifying of the hard disks in the background. And this will take a bit of time. You can see that countdown going. So just leave this uh, running. Now, the network may be very slow while this is doing it. So just give this a bit of time and be patient. Once this is done, you won't have to do this again. So this part is setting up your NAS and it will take a bit, bit of time to do this. So be patient. You can see the CPU and RAM being used here. Um, but other than that, I found it not to be a problem at all. So try and do this uh, when you're not using uh, the computer on a network uh, really, and you should be fine. So let's drop this down and uh, quickly create uh, a shared file. But before I do that, just check the status on the uh, NAS drive here. It should now go green. There we go. And uh, you can see the other drives flash in here. These will stabilize once it's uh, finished its little job here. So we'll just go back and create a shared file and a user account to share our data across our network. So we're going to click on a control panel here. And you can see here we've got shared folder. So we can drag this to our desktop here if we wanted to and drag whatever we like there. We can also go into these options and we can create a shared folder. And from inside here, you can create users, groups, and do whatever you like inside here. I can cover this in more videos if you want to, let me know. So we're gonna quickly go to create here and we'll give this, uh, say, folder a name here so you can see how easy it is to set up. It's pretty straightforward and easy to do here. So I'm gonna go in and give it a name. So I'm gonna call this um, my stuff or something like that. Let me go, just give this a quick name here. And you can call it whatever you like give it a description so you know what it is I'll just call this my stuff and the location is the volume one there's nothing else to select in there so I'll just leave that as is and again you can I disk a shared folder on your network if you wish I'm just gonna go next you can encrypt it as well if you want to do that I'm not gonna do that but you can do you can encrypt it and give the uh, encryption key here I'm gonna skip that part and go next and move on to the next stage so you can see here we're going to go on to the next bit here and you can see we can add in our uh, sort of shared folder quota if we wanted to do that you can enable the checksum for advanced data integrity and then you will be able to change all the uh, compression here for the files and you can also put in the uh, quota the amount that they can use if you want to do that you can set all this up uh, but for this purpose we can leave all this as is and if you wanted to add in there the quota you can do and this will allow them the certain amount of gigabytes uh, that they can use here but i'm going to leave that as a standard we've got terabytes and megabytes there as well um, but basically we'll leave that as is and go next and move on to the next step so what i need to do here now is apply these changes that we've set and this will then create our folder once we've done that, we can set permissions for that if we wish, but this is another topic, uh, another video. I'll just quickly um, show you here some of the stuff you can do. You've got the uh, local users here, and also you can change the read and write permissions for each of those uh, guests and also myself. If I wanted to do that, I can do that as well. So it's entirely up to you which way you want to go about doing this. Uh, if you want to see more videos on this sort of stuff, let me know in the comments section. But you basically no access, read, write, read only. And also uh, we've got some others here. So you can see guest has got no access here. So if I put ticks in read, write, uh, they would be able to get that and also read only. And uh, we can also do custom if we want to. But I'm just going to leave that as no access for guest. And here is our folder. So let's go ahead and log in to a computer and send some data to uh, that folder. So we can see it's found our um, NAS drive on our network and there it is there. So we can click on this if we wanted to and it should show uh, that folder on our network which we can actually drop stuff into. We can then create users and uh, we can also create groups for people to use certain folders onto this NAS drive if I wanted to. And you can see there is um, that folder called MySpace. It's got the pipe work underneath it, which means it's networked. And I can just copy some data here and send that to that folder. It's very simple and easy to do. Now, if I wanted to create stuff um, for people outside of my network, I can do that also, friends and family. 
or people that are generally in my network if you're a small business something like this NAS drive is going to be awesome uh, for backing up all your data and keeping it safe so going into the file station here you should now see all of the files that I've just copied up onto that folder onto my NAS drive got a nice little viewing uh, program here that lets you view the files that you've just gone through I can flick through these if I wanted to put some in a recycle bin and do a bunch of other stuff uh, with this particular type of little application there is loads more that you can do with this let me know in the comment section below what you want to see me do with this NAS drive and I'll do those videos for you so let's quickly take a look at some of the applications here that you can install on this NAS drive and I'll do some more videos on this in the up and coming weeks so stay tuned for those but this video is getting a bit long now so I'll end this one with just showing you some of the applications here there is bundles and bundles of applications that you can install and use your NAS drive for anyway that's about it for this video my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk I hope you enjoyed the video if you did then give it a thumbs up and also have a great weekend and I shall see you again for another video real soon thanks again for watching bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos